Hey everyone, welcome back football fans, CFL fans. It's Brad Hornby here. Here we are, ready to be start upon another season of CFL action for the 2019 season here. And I'll continue on the tradition that I started last season that right after preseason, as it's wrapped up, I'll make my predictions on where I think teams will finish in each standing and give my mood on each team as we are at the start of the season. And then, right before Labor Day weekend, which this year's case will be after my summer holiday here, as I'll be coming home just before the Labor Day weekend, I'll revisit them. Last year, well, when I had the start of the year, I definitely uh, really missed the mark on who I thought was going to be at the Grey Cup last year up at Edmonton. Because at the start of the season, I said it was going to be Edmonton over Toronto for the Grey Cup when it was played in Edmonton last year. And as it turned out, both of those teams missed the playoffs there. And then when I revisited it at Labor Day, I was actually banged on because at the time I made some adjustments based on what happened at the first half of the season. And many CFL fans say that the regular season doesn't start till after Labor Day when things heat up even more. I said it was going to be Calgary over Ottawa for the Grey Cup, 106 Grey Cup up at Edmonton. And indeed it was Calgary or Ottawa here, but this is just based on one season of doing this and you know I'll keep doing this as long as I tend to be active here on YouTube here and also I decided to before I did that video last season I didn't know what I was going to do for recap to Stampeders but then I also did my first season of my Calgary Stampeders this month and I just started season two there with May there because there was a preseason game in May there so anyway We've, when I made my predictions here, uh, I'm going to stay, I'm only confident, I'm fully confident in two predictions in general here. My only confident right now is who I feel is going to finish first place in the Eastern Division here. And I'm going to generally say, like last year, there's going to be a West crossover in this season. Especially after uh, free agency, what happened free agency. But... Actually, today, as I was making my notes here, I had to make a little adjustment here as I'm really scratching my head here is that, believe it or not, the Montreal Alouettes, after training camp and preseason's done, preseason's over, Kager Shreed, who I think has been the problem with the Montreal Alouettes here, they decided to let Mike Sherman, the head coach, go. You know, the same Mike Sherman I used to coach the Green Bay Packers and Brett Favre after they won their Super Bowl there in the early 2000s there. I didn't think he was a, that big a fit there, but I recall Kavis Reed saying that, uh, you know, he was going to come back next season when he said the end of the season meaning coach this season, but I don't think he meant, you know, he were going to let you go right after free season, which that doesn't make sense here, so... I'll, I'm going to be confident in three predictions here now. So anyway, what I'm going to do in the last year is I'll start east to west, and then I'll go from bottom to top, and then set up the bracket, and then go through it and give my predictions of who I think will win the 107th Grey Cup right here in Calgary. So I'll bring out my notes here, and, uh, and I'll make note of placing and records here when I revisit this. And Labor Day or maybe you know I'll be so bang on that I'll just say watch the video my predictions are still the same here but uh, as it always happens there's always going to be surprises you're going to have a team that's going to overachieve and a uh, team that's going to underachieve here so anyway let's get going with the predictions here so let's start in the East Division here and who I think is going to finish Fourth in the Easter Division here, well, that decision got much easier this morning as I am going to put the Montreal Alouettes in fourth place in the Easter Division there. I didn't think they were going to 
get back into the playoffs here this year, but uh, I have Montreal at 5-13 and 13 going into this season here. I think they finished 5-13 and 13 last season, and actually third in the uh, East Division area. It was definitely a weak division, and, and the West will definitely be a lot more superior, but uh, I'm scratching my head on uh, why did they decide to let Mike Sherman go now. And Carter Jones is named as the interim head coach, the former quarterback, who he's had some success as a player, and uh, and he's had some, you know, decent success as quarterback coach when he coached with the Hamilton Tire Cats, and he has, was part of the coaching staff of the 2013 Saskatchewan Rough Riders when they won their Grey Cup there, and he worked with the uh, Montreal Alouettes last year, but He's only been in the organization in the coaching ranks for two seasons here, but I mean, there's still too many question marks here with the Montreal Alouettes. I mean, I mean, the one other big story was uh, of all the Montreal Alouettes was uh, I made a separate video of it because of the name Johnny. Don't call him Johnny anymore, but John Benzel, uh, you know, he the league forced Montreal to cut him and pretty much banned him for contravening agreements, and uh, I think for Johnny Benzel did that on purpose. He didn't want to play in the CFL anymore, but I think that decision backfired because the he did play in the AAF, and the AAF had folded and didn't make it to the championship game there, but I mean, one of the big names that the uh, Alouettes did acquire in the offseason, well, I mean, they got the Vera Posey for receiver, and they did actually get Spencer Wilson from the Saskatchewan Stampeders to maybe shore up their offensive line a little. And, uh, and actually, Sianti Evans, the uh, cornerback, actually signed with the Montreal Wats after he played in the AEF there. But, uh, you know, and then they still got Young Look Mamba on the defense there. But, uh, you know, it's definitely been a change of uh, guard here in Montreal along long after Anthony Calvillo, but the downfall of this franchise has been no succession plan, and I mean, Chip Cox, John Bowman, I mean, they're it's time to move on there, but uh, I think it's going to be another long season here in Montreal, plus the fact that the team is still trying to find an owner here, and the league uh, temporarily owns them, but uh, I think as long as Caves Reed's general manager there, this team is never going to get back in the playoffs until they have someone else making Better decisions, uh, but you know, at worst they'll have a first, first overall pick here. Well, actually, no, they won't, because they traded that away to get Johnny Menzel here. But it's looking like you know, Antonio Hickin or maybe uh, Vernon Adams could be their quarterback here. But there's too many question marks for me to to move uh, Montreal higher here. So I got Montreal 5-13, fourth and East here. Third place in the East here. Keep in mind, I said there's going to be a crossover here, so this team will not make the playoffs. But I think the Ottawa Red Blacks are going to slip down to third place here in the East and finish with a 7 11 record here. No, we'll thank Kevin here for the convenience store here, but unfortunately, the Ottawa Red Blacks definitely got decimated in free agency here as Trevor Harris, right? Ray Ellenson and uh, also Sir Vince Rogers, they all went to Edmonton here. So uh, the one big name that may have gotten in the, uh, and they also lost William Powell to uh, Saskatchewan. So uh, a lot of pieces of their offense has been gone here. And they're flying out starting the season with Dominic Davis as quarterback, who has shown some upside, but, uh, you know, he got him and then, Jonathan Jennings, they also signed from BC here, who I personally think needed a change of scenery here. But uh, I think Ottawa is going to regress big time here with all the key free agent bosses they had all going west here. So uh, I think the Ottawa Red Blacks, you know, they have been a successful franchise for the most part after their first season there and, you know, gone to a few great cups, won one. Uh, 2016 there, but when you think about Ottawa, it was just barely over 500 much of that time there, but in uh, not as strong of an Eastern Division here, but uh, I think Ottawa will be taking 
a huge step back here. So now that leaves with two more Ontario franchises left here. So who do I have finishing second place in the East here? Well, I think the Toronto Argonauts will bounce back this year and finish with a respectable 9-9 record here. And I think one of the big reasons why is, well, Ricky Ray had decided to retire here. And also, they shipped out Mark Tressman. They let him go and brought in Corey Chamberlain as head coach here. And I, I think he definitely deserves another shot of being the head coach in the CFL here. And also, I think hopefully they'll decide to name James Franklin the uh, starting quarterback here. I mean, he had definitely gone through some growing pains last year being the... Uh, Starting quarterback suddenly here. I mean, unfortunately, he didn't get as much time to learn under Ricky Ray as of watching him. I and mean, Ricky Ray was on the sidelines there. But uh, Mark Trestman seemed to favor uh, McLeod Bethel Thompson over James Franklin. You know, I think James Franklin is a better quarterback than uh, McLeod Bethel Thompson. But McLeod Bethel Thompson also got some valuable experience playing last year, too. And I think he'd be a a solid backup there, and they did have Brandon Bridge, but apparently Toronto's looking at uh, shopping him around there too. But they also still got James Wilder Jr., they got Brandon Rutley, they got Chris Rainey, and they also got Daryl Walker, a receiver. So I think Toronto, with those pieces alone there, and then having Corey Chamberlain in as head coach, I think the Toronto Argonauts are going to be bound to. Uh, Rebound here and finish with a respectable 9-9 record here. So that leaves Hamilton Tiger Cats to be first in the Eastern Division here. And I think this is Hamilton's to lose here. Well, I got them finished 13-5 here because I think Hamilton is the most talented team in the Eastern Division there. But I still think the Eastern Division as a whole is a, a much weaker division there, which is why... I'm giving them a 13 and 5 record here. I mean, clearly they're the uh, been the top team. Well, they definitely rebounded from the last couple of years there. I mean, actually they lost their head coach June Jones to the uh, XFL here. But the one guy who I personally think is ready to be head coach is Orlando Steinhauer, who is now the head coach of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, a defensive genius there. And Hamilton, I still think, is going to continue right where they left off. I mean, Jeremiah Mazzoli, who's definitely starting to solidify himself up there with, let's say, guys like Bull Levi Mitchell and Mike Riley as the top tier quarterbacks in the CFL. So they still have, you know, Mr. Uh, Jeremiah Mazzoli there. And uh, they have guys like Brandon Banks, who has been used more as a returner. And, uh, also the fact that uh, Brian Anderson, let's see if he could pick off from where he left off. And they still got Luke Tasker, so uh, I think Hamilton's still very stacked in defense there. There's an only still got Ted Laurent leading away on their defense and Agent Tracy there. So And then they got Larry Harlow, one of their top kickers in the league there. So I think Hamilton, you know, if they can play up to their ability here, they should be able to cruise to first place in the Eastern Division here, in a not so strong division here. But I think the second place will be a little more hotly contested here. I think especially between Toronto and Ottawa here, but Toronto I think is going to rebound back here. So to recap my predictions for the uh, East Division here, I have Montreal fourth place at five and thirteen, Ottawa. 7-11, and I don't think there's going to be a West crossover, so those two teams will be watching the semifinals being eliminated. Toronto Argonauts, I got them second at 9-9, and Hamilton, I got them 13-5 there. So, now let's shift gears and go out west here, and I'm going to say, like last year, the west is definitely going to be a stronger division this year especially with free agency, but unfortunately one team is going to have some good teams finishing lower than they probably should and one team not making the playoffs here. 
and like last year, nine and nine in the was last place in the uh, West Division, missed the playoffs, and actually Hamilton finished eight and ten and second in the East there. But uh, this year, I, unfortunately for you, Rider Nation, not because I'm a Stampeder fan, but uh, I got Saskatchewan in fifth place at nine and nine here, and the reason why I got Saskatchewan down at Nine and nine. There is well, the big question mark with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders is, is Zach Laros. Not because I don't have any faith in his ability to play quarterback here, is how healthy he is because he's definitely has had some concussion problems the last last season here, and that was one of the reasons why he wasn't able to play in the West semifinal game last year against Winnipeg here. The other big question is that suddenly Chris Jones, the head coach, who was offered a position to work on Cleveland Browns defense in the NFL here, but another guy who I think has done his time in the CFL and the various coaching ranks, his brother of our head coach, Dave Dickinson, Craig Dickinson, is going to be the head coach of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders this year, so... Be interested to see how things are going here, but uh, I mean, you got Zach Laros in as going to be starting quarterback. They did get Cody Fajardo, and he looks like he's a stolid backup. But I mean, they still got guys like Naaman Roosevelt, and they did get William Powell on offense there. But I think the strength of the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders will st still be their defense, and uh, that's been the strength of their team for the last few years. But Sometimes Saskatchewan has struggled to score points here the last couple of years. I mean, Sac Saskatchewan's definitely going to be even stronger this year because, I mean, they got Charleston Hughes and they actually got Michael Johnson, who tied with Charleston Hughes and Sacks last year. So they're both going to the same defensive line there. And they've got Ganey in the secondary there. So I think Saskatchewan's going to be in, in a lot of games this year. And will win a few games ugly, but I still think this team's offense is their weakness right now. But they still have a stacked defense in my mind, and unfortunately, the way how the playoff system works here, I don't see Saskatchewan making the playoffs right now in a very tough Western Division there. So in fourth place here, I got the Edmonton Eskimos with a 10-8 and record here. I mean, Edmonton I'm going to say, given free agency, they lost Mike Riley to the BC Lions, as BC Lions had the money, and Mike Riley actually wanted to move a little closer to home there. He started his CFL career with the Lions, went to school in Washington, so that's why he helped me left Edmonton there. They lost Akeel Williams, Duke Williams, to the NFL, and Darrell Walker to the, uh, the uh, NFL, or Toronto there, but... They were able to get Trevor Harris from Ottawa, who I'm going to say he's on. He's just below that. He's in that German Hanzoli category of being the top of the lower tier of the next tier behind Riley and uh, Bowley of Mitchell. But the uh, thing is, they had Riley last year, missed the playoffs after they collapsed in the second half there. But, you know, they still got Greg Ellenson and uh, also the fact they still got CJ Gable to run the ball and. Uh, they got Sir Vincent Rogers, the middle linebacker, because uh, J.C. Sherrod retired and happened to coach, join the Calgary Stampeders coaching rank here. But, uh, you know, I think the Edmonton Eskimos are going to rebound a little here, but I don't think they're going to be good enough to uh, contend with the top three here because I think the top three in the West here are going to be the teams that are going to be the teams to beat for the uh, Grey Cup here. And just with them all being in the West here, it's going to be a heavyweight matchup here. So I got Edmonton to fourth, but they will make the playoffs and cross over to the East there. Third place, I do have the BC Lions finishing third at 11 and 7 here. BC Lions, I mean, they uh, definitely signed the biggest fish in the free agent pool. And Mike Riley there, Travis Lule retired, and Jonathan Jennings moved on to the Ottawa Red Blacks here. 
But, I mean, they still got Brian Burnham, and uh, they also signed Lamar Durant from Calgary, and, uh, I mean, on defense, they, uh, I believe they still have Odell Willis there, but uh, definitely offensively, the BC Lions will definitely be stacked there, and you're definitely going to have a chance to win with Mike Riley at the helm here, but uh, the other big story with the BC Lions is uh, they uh, got a new head coach as Wally Bono retired and uh, eventually the Calgary lost their defensive mastermind and Devon Claybrooks, so Devon Claybrooks is now the head coach of the BC Lions here, so he's going to be taking on quite a task of being the guy that replaces the legend here, but uh, I think BC is going to have a, a fairly solid team that can put up a lot of points here, but we'll see uh, how the defense does here, because I've seen some other <coughs> pundits put them either higher or lower here, but uh, I'm going to put them in three and split the difference here. So, second place, I do actually have the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at uh, 11 and 7 here. I think Winnipeg, I put both BC and Winnipeg 11 and 7 here, but it tells you how close the uh, West would be here. But Winnipeg, I still think they're a well balanced team here. I mean, they got uh, Matt Nichols, a quarterback, and Chris Strebler, definitely showing he's a very capable and a very exciting backup quarterback. And, he definitely won them a few games last year, and he still got Andrew Harris to run the ball, and uh, they got a solid receiving core. I mean, also, one of the big names that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers signed in the offseason was Willie Jefferson from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders there. So uh, I think Winnipeg is definitely showing that they can be a contender here. I mean, they lost a tough defensive battle to the Calgary Stampeders in the West Final last year, but, uh, you know, I'm liking how Winnipeg is looking, and uh, they're definitely going to be a strong contender all season here. So the one team I haven't mentioned yet, who I think will still finish first in the West Division here, is my character Stan Peters here, and even though we lost a lot of players on defense there, including our mastermind, Devon Claybrooks, I mean, Singleton, Singleton went to the NFL, and James Fodders, and Samir Thurman. I mean, those are big guys that we lost here. And uh, some receivers we lost. I mean, uh, Chris Matthews it was a nice pickup. He went to Winnipeg there, and Lamar Durant went to uh, BC there. But, you know, could a guy like Jawan Braskistan or, you know, maybe uh, Marquis Amble step up? We still got Eric Rogers and... Uh, Kamar Jordan, but uh, are they healthy enough yet to start right away? But I still say Calgary has had the ability to uh, to take one of John Huffnagel's former words from the speech from the 96 Great Cup, which we've been able to reload and answer. And uh, I know, yeah, we were able to uh, keep Bo Levi Mitchell and sign him for another four years here, who is the reigning most outstanding player reward here, winner here, and apparently. I believe I Mitchell took less money to stay in Calgary because Saskatchewan and especially Toronto were after his heels here. And uh, I'm going to still say, given how this team is built here, there might be a few players that might step up and fill the void here and keep this team going here. But I got the Calgary Stampede still finishing first here at 12 and 6 here, just on the ability of how we've been able to find and replenish talent here, which. Definitely something that some teams are going to be jealous about. It almost seems unfair here, but uh, I'm still keeping faith in the John Huffnagel regime here and being able to uh, replace what we've lost here and uh, have the incentive with the big game in Calgary here. Calgary wants to still be a contender here. So to recap the West Division here, I got Saskatchewan at 5th at 9 and 9, Edmonton 4th at 10 and 8, BC 3rd at 11 and 7, Winnipeg 2nd at 11 and 7. And Calgary 12 and 6. So now let's set up the bracket here. So, as you recall, here, if you go back out east here, I have the Hamilton Tiger Cats finishing first in the East Division here. So, they'll get a bye and host the West Final, or the East Final, I should say. And the Toronto Argonauts will host the East Semi Final here, and they'll be 
taking on the Hampton Eskimos here because the Hampton Eskimos at a 10 and 8 record, fourth in the West. There's a better record in Ottawa that I got with 7 11 in the East there. We'll take Ottawa's spot here. So the East semifinal, I have Toronto hosting Edmonton here. And I actually got Edmonton uh, being the Toronto Argonauts here in this case because I still think Edmonton has a lot more talent than Toronto here. And I'm going to still factor in the fact that they have Trevor Harris and Trevor Harris. Uh, has more familiarity with the Eastern opponents here. Plus, James Franklin, I'm assuming, will be the starter and playing in his first playoff game here. And, uh, you know, I just think Edmonton will knock off Toronto here in this case. So now if you go back west here, I have the Calgary Stampeders Peters first at 12-6 there. So that means that uh, we'll get to host the Western final here. And actually every year, with the exception of 2015, when Edmonton hosts the Western Final, Alberta at least hosts the Western Final every year since 2013. So if my prediction comes the case, that the road to the Great Cup will still go through Alberta here. But I have Winnipeg hosting BC because I have Winnipeg at second and BC at third here. And for the West semifinal, I do have Winnipeg over BC here. So uh, so now we'll have the final four here. The East Final, I got the Hamilton Tiger Cats hosting the Hamilton Eskimos. And the Western Final, we'll have a rematch of last year where we have the Calgary Stampeders hosting the Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. So the East Final here, and obviously that question is going to be asked here. Will this be the year that the will a crossover team go on to represent the East in the Grey Cup? There's been a few times where the East team, Eastern finalist, where has always been an Eastern team, but it's been a few close calls here where a Western team almost knocked off the East division winner and represent the East in the Grey Cup here. And you gotta think it's gonna have to happen one of these times. And I'm gonna say, just for the sake of my predictions here, I'm going to say the Edmonton Eskimos will beat the Hamilton Tiger Cats here in the East Final, and they'll be in the Grey Cup. And the 107th Grey Cup has Eastern champions. And once again, I'm going to still say Trevor Harris, familiar with the East, and he definitely uh, made some meat over the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the East Final last year here. So I'm going to say that trend continues. Go out west here. Well, here we are. Calgary Stampeders in the Western Final and uh, hosting the Grey Cup here. They've been down this road many times before and will I feel it will end in a Western Final heartbreak or Western Final jubilation and I'm going to say it's going to have to happen one of these times where the Calgary Stampeders will finally win that West Final when they're hosting the Grey Cup. And I'm going to say we still got Bo and I got faith in Bo that the Calgary Stampeders will beat the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the uh, Western Final here. And I think I'll have my dream Grey Cup here. A Calgary Edmonton Grey Cup right here in Calgary. The 107th Grey Cup here in Calgary. We'll have the Calgary Stampeders and the Edmonton Eskimos here. And i say it's going to happen. I'm going to need another one of these. The Calgary Stampeders will def successfully defend their Grey Cup title and beat the Edmonton Eskimos at the 106th Grey Cup right here in Calgary at McMahon Stadium here. That's definitely going to be Labor Day times a thousand here. But the one twist I'm going to add in here is that I didn't do it last year, but I have Calgary beating Edmonton for the Grey Cup. I'm also going to make my Grey Cup MVP and top Canadian here. And uh, Bo Levi Mitchell is obviously the obvious choice to be the the MVP for the game here, and then top Canadian, I'm going to give that to our receiver, John Breskis in here, so uh, as I keep in mind here, these are just my personal predictions, and uh, this is my mood on each of the nine teams going into the regular season here, but based on my track record here, I'm going to be making some adjustments here on uh, Labor Day here, and I'll revisit these predictions on Labor Day here, and Make some adjustments here, but uh, you know, you gotta have to think one of these times. 
the East crossover team has got to win and represent the East, or the West team crossing over the East, you got to have to think one of these times it's going to happen that they're going to get to the Grey Cup. And, you know, my Calgary Stampeders, I'm thinking the last previous three years that we hosted the Grey Cup, 1993, 2000, 2009, we had great teams that year, and I got let down the Western Final here, and four times a chart, right? We're going, my Stampeders won't let me down the Western Final and get into the Grey Cup at home, and they're going to win it at home. And we got the Cup already here, so you got to figure, finally, Things will work out that way. I mean, this definitely be my dream Grey Cup if it actually happens here. But, uh, you know, I know many people might disagree or maybe agree here. But who do you think is going to finish where and in the stands? And who do you think is going to be right here at McMahon Stadium on Sunday, November 24th to play for the Grey Cup? I mean, I'm going to be at the game either way. I'm, I'm going to take in the festivities either way, even if it's... Edmonton, Saskatchewan there. If that happens, uh, I'll have to find a player that I really want to see win a cup, and then I'll be cheering more for the player than the team there. Because if I ever have my dream Grey Cup here, I'm going to have to have my name with Grey Cup one other year. But, uh, you know, with the big game being here, uh, I still like Calgary's chances of we brought the Grey Cup home. Now let's keep it home here. So these are just my predictions and how I feel coming into the 2019 CFL season here. I'll see you and after Labor Day or just before Labor Day and I'll revisit it and make some adjustments necessary but uh, we'll see what happens. Enjoy the games and as I say uh, I'll see you in the next video and uh, I'll see you in Mike Stampeders this month if you're following along there too. So thank you.